Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, uh, Improving Insights to Profitability with COPA and SAP RAR. I apologize for the uh, delay in starting. We had a few issues with uh, internet this morning, as I'm sure many of you have. Uh, so thank you for joining. We'll try and go through the introduction quickly. Uh, so as always, the webinar is being recorded. So come on and over and check it out. Uh, you can uh, also ask questions down here through the questions uh, section, uh, and you can download previous webinars. Uh, here we have an opportunity for you. Go, go to the website. You can check out the Resource Center. Here's uh, our upcoming webinar with uh, Julio De La Costa and team talking about technical accounting issues for M&A. Uh, we're going to be focusing that a little bit more on some of the M&A issues and challenges in current environment. Uh, then you can also take a look at our webinars here, uh, scroll down the page, the homepage, check out any individual webinar that you're interested in. You can contact us on bramasall.com. You can come over here to Facebook and join us, check out LinkedIn. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, yes, we do have a YouTube channel. So I'm excited to let you know you can join us, check out our YouTube channel. We have dozens uh, probably near 100, but I think uh, dozens of videos available there. So um, I'm going to do an introduction in a moment, uh, and then we'll talk about why we're here, uh, how can RAR and COPA come together to improve visibility to profit, and then uh, our team will show you a, a really great demo that I'm excited for you all to see. So on the line, and why are we here, let me talk a little bit about, you know, who do we have on the line? On the line, we have myself. John Froelich, Vice President of Marketing and Strategy. Uh, Julio de la Costa, who's joined us. He is the lead on our technical accounting and our accounting advisory services team. Also joining us this week are uh, Jacek Dudkowski, who is our managing consultant for RAR. He's been on several of our uh, webinars in the past. So welcome, Jacek. And then new to our team here uh, is Shashank Suripuram. And he is going to be the star of this. He's going to show some great innovations that we have done around COPA and RAR integration to give you profitability. So why really are we here? Uh, we're here because of a number of reasons. Number one is uh, we have some great uh, intellectual property and ideas to show you. But also COVID-19 has really put a focus on what is going on. And I like this PwC Pulse survey that they've been doing because it shows and talks a lot about some of the issues and challenges and we'll be using some of this information as we go through the next few of our webinars because i think it hones in on some of the issues and challenges that we face and what pwc did was they went out and surveyed almost a thousand different cfos in their base and asked them a series of questions and what they found was of course no surprise to all of you uh, three quarters of CFOs found significant concern about what is going on with regard to COVID-19. But when it came to what their major concerns were, it was interesting to see that they're focused heavily on potential global recession and the implications in the economy. And of course, we're seeing that right now. The next one of, is no surprise, which is the financial impact. So what are the effects on the results of operations, periods, liquidity, and other areas. And really, to me, that kind of talked a little bit about a key aspect of things like profitability. Another area that they talked about is implementing cost containment. And cost containment can come in a different variety of areas. That can include things around really looking at how do you manage leases and costs? How do you look at just general A type costs? Uh, and, and other areas looking and dialing in at what are the costs and the real costs and profitability of your products and the solutions that you offer. And that's why I thought this would be really interesting for everybody here. So SAP brings two tools to help in this process. The first of them is SAP Revenue Accounting and Reporting. And what SAP RAR does is it helps simplify and automate your revenue recognition. It brings together all of the tools in such a way and, and allows you to, to, again, really look at how do I manage my revenue accounting in line with 
ASC 606 and IFRS 15. And it does it in an automated way so that you can uh, manage your business and not have to worry about all of that. The second is COPA profitability analysis. It enables you to evaluate market segments and really do a lot more around managing your profitability down to sales organizations, business areas, uh, or other. And just to set the stage, and, and in a couple of slides, I'll turn it over to uh, Shashank. Um, but there are two forms of profitability analysis, cost-based and account-based. Uh, and it's important to understand that those are two different approaches. Um, maybe Julio, you can just kind of make a comment about your perspective on those two uh, areas as a practitioner. Julio? Hey, John, how are you? Um, this is Good. Julio Dal Costa from Bramasol. So, John, to your point, in these times, it's very important that we start looking at granular levels of profitability. So, you know, as, as us in the accounting world, we're always looking at numbers and we're, we're reviewing numbers either monthly, in some cases you're reviewing real time, which is the continuous close approach, but in today's environment especially, what you're talking about is really looking at your profitability on a very granular level. And that's going to be very important because as Shashank is going to show us, we're going to look at profitability on an RAR performance obligation level, which is a game changer in my perspective because you can see you know, your revenue numbers coming out of the system, your performance obligations, but when you start mixing your performance obligations on a revenue perspective and you add to that your standard costing, it's going to help you in two ways, John. It's going to help you in looking at your deals from a, you know, a preventative level, which is say, okay, what is my profitability going to look like on these granular level performance obligations? And obviously what we're accustomed to in, in, in us accountants is looking at it after the fact. So, and what is that going to drive, John? That's really going to drive a key aspect of managing your business more proactively, which is, is my revenue mix correct? Especially in changing times as we are in today, do I have the right revenue mix? When I talk about revenue mix, what I'm talking about is are my services, hardware, software, are all these the right mix for what is going on? And it's going to allow me as a forward-looking accounting finance group to make recommendations to my exec executive team on a quicker basis. So John, so from that perspective, that's what we're seeing now. I think this is a very important point for us to talk about in this webinar because it's going to really gonna help companies drive profitability more quickly, which everybody wants to talk about now. Yeah, and, and thank you, Julio. Uh, thank you, I'm excited when I saw it. Um, so what is it that, that RAR plus together really does for your business? To me, or, or, or from my perspective, I saw this and I said, wow, because it's powerful insights into real-time property to actual revenue base activity on rev rolls. So for example, when you take a look at this, I think you'll all agree with me, to see is not just profitability level or revenue level, but really as you look at the way FR you know, or ASC 606, the five model says, you're reallocating or you're allocating uh, revenue to each of these areas. And by combining these tools, you a really good sense of the actual profitability down to what we'll call a POB level. And with that, um, what we'll see today is we're going to see RAR and COPA. Um, what's it, you're going to see some data um, and see that it the same error. Bramasol is unique IP to drive deeper insights, insight to action reporting. So with that, uh, I am going to turn this over to Shashank and Yasek. And guys, um, again, be excited. And I have a big audience out there uh, looking to see what you have to say. So Shashank, take it away. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, 
Uh, good morning and good, good afternoon. So I'm going to present a demo, a walkthrough of a demo uh, which consists of uh, uh, SD to RAR flow along with the COPA uh, reporting. So how this uh, uh, COPA can uh, leverage the things uh, from RAR perspective to understand the profitability uh, using COPA tools. So we know like we can use COPA uh, to derive the profitability by different uh, dimensions like sales organization, sales order, uh, several other things. But adding the RER flavor, so what we are going to show now is, I'm going to show uh, a demo where you can see profitability uh, of RER contract or POB or POB type. So this is something uh, we developed in our system and I would like to show that. So let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to start from creating a sales order uh, to show you how the data flow happens between SD and RAR and COPA. So I'm going to create a sales order which contains uh, two line items so that we can have uh, two uh, POB scenario. So I'm going to use an existing sales order uh, just to pick the, make the things fast. So here I'm going to use two items. So one is going to represent hardware and the other one is service. So we, we have uh, you know some revenue discount and cost uh, assigned to each of these lines. So it has its own SSP. This is for hardware line. And the same thing goes with service line. So we have specific uh, cost and SSP and it has uh, some revenue and discount. So the second line, which is service, is mainly to deal with time-based revenue recognition. So we have start and end date for one year, from April to March. And I'm going to save this uh, sales order. So 7.21, so I'm going to manually process uh, this sales order to ARIA to create the contract for it. So this is the contract which we created, so which consists of uh, two POBs, one for hardware, other for service. And uh, so you see there is an allocation effect and uh, we have uh, revenue recognized, uh, revenue allocated accordingly. So I'm going to do the delivery and uh, invoice it. So these steps uh, will not change, uh, this remains the same. So let me do the PGA. So we have some proof of delivery concept. Let me confirm the proof of delivery. And I'm going to do the billing for this. Not saved. I'm going to build this. So both the items, I'm going to build both the items. And I'm going to process these raw, raw items to ARIA. So now you would see some revenue recognized on this POB. You can see a revenue of uh, 136 and 1417 has been recognized on each of these POBs. So now we are going to run the postings uh, for this contract. So that's where uh, the COPA profitability uh, values gets posted. So this is a three step posting job, uh, standard by SAP. So we'll just have to run this uh, manually here. Uh, third step, third step. So this is the job uh, where it gets uh, an accounting document gets posted. This is the document number ending with four one eight. So let's explore the document.
So this is the document. So basically, when you go to the document environment of this accounting document, so you will see two profitability analysis documents generated, uh, one for each POB. As we have two POBs on this contract, we see two POBs. So you see this data like company code, sales are. So this is the data that you get to see uh, irrespective of RAR. But what you see, the additional uh, dimensions are here, the contract. So this is the contract that we ran the postings. So 580, this is the contract. And the first POB is 5139. So this is the POB. And this is the POB type hardware. And now these values, the, the values that we have posted, the amount has been recorded again in these three dimensions. And you can see the revenue gets updated on the same COPA document. So this is a 46, this is the uh, RAR allocation effect. You can similarly uh, go to the other POB, other profitability analysis document and see the second POB is updated here. POB number 5140 and service. So let me cross check that with here. So this is the POB. And similarly, the uh, amount has been updated here. So this is how it looks. And if you would like to see the profitability report, like what is, if you wanted to understand the profitability of this contract, so you may explore uh, the COPA report. So here is the one that we created. So the sales order that we created is 721. And you execute this report. So here you have the options to navigate, uh, you know, on which dimension you want to explore your profitability analysis. So these are two products coming from sales order. So if you like to see your uh, profitability by RER contract, so you need to click on contract here. And this is your, uh, you know, this is the profitability of this contract. Like what is the sales revenue? What is the total deduction? And your net revenue, uh, cost of goods sold, gross profit. This is the gross margin. So we didn't have any operating expense for this. So it shows, it shows zero. And your operating profit also remains same because there is no operating expense. So you would be able to explore and uh, use this information for your manager in, in reporting and you can click on the POB type. So this gives you the profitability of your uh, each POB type. So how each POB is performing uh, in your company. So this, these are the numbers. So if you like to see the hardware, you can just drill down to the hardware and it shows which POB has uh, this information. So POB one, uh, which is hardware in our case, has a total uh, recognized revenue of 136 which you can see here. So the recognized amount for first POB is 136. And that's what you see here after the direct uh, sales discount. And this is the cost of goods sold. So this is your gross profit. So similarly, you can explore different ways. Like you can click on the POB. So it will show the two POBs linked to this contract and the sales order that we executed. So you can you can double click on the each POB to see your profitability for that POB alone. So you can also have multiple reports like this. This report shows the values with respect to one sales order. So you, you can define the reports in such a way that that tells you the overall profitability by different uh, dimensions. Like this is a report uh, which shows all the uh, contracts and sales orders. So if you want to see your profitability of each of your POB type, so you can analyze the POB type uh, by just clicking on them. So these are the numbers for uh, POB type uh, hardware. So hardware is maintained on all these POB types. So, so it, it lists out the, all, what are all your POBs and contracts for this POB type, and you can analyze the data as you need it. So this is effectively helps you, your management, to take a uh, decision of what, how the a product or POB is performing in your company. Let's, let's pause a moment, uh, Shoshana, yeah, that, that was great. Um, a couple of comments and then I'm interested, Julio, so get ready for your thoughts. Um, 
back for a moment to the RA contract level, and then we'll go into the POB. So can you go back to the RA contract report, please? Sure. Thank you. So as, as Shashanka is going through this, what occurred to me or what was interesting to me is as we look at these reports, what we've seen is their ability to link uh, SAP COPA to RAR. And if we're able to, under normal circumstances, just run a normal profitability analysis, there's a couple of activities that happen in that process. Without linking together RAR and um, COPA, what you're doing is creating um, assumptions or you're using spreadsheets. And here what's happening is the allocated price uh, or allocated value, allocated revenue is now being uh, viewed. So you can truly see over here the true value of that, that item as it relates to how revenue is going to be reported and therefore drives back into uh, the individual uh, element, right? So you can see here as, as Shashank goes in here, we can begin to look at that and say, Wow, you know, in the sales order, we had assumed that hardware would be X amount of price uh, versus what it really is in terms of revenue. Uh, so Julio, talk about the, the, the implications of that along with, um, we'll talk a little bit, you know, Shashank about um, linking it to the RA contract and being able to look really at, at deal levels. And we can go back to maybe that view of all of the different RA contracts while Julio talks, Shashank. Yeah. Yeah, sure, John. So I think the key here is really, if you see what Shashank is doing, is that the RAR contract is the new central object. It's no longer the sales order and the sales contract. And this obviously is a very important and critical pivot, a view on you know, the contract activity, the deal, the bundle. So especially if you have many sales orders, that come into one RER contract because following the guidelines of 606, you have to look at the deal now on do we even have a contract? And you know, once the answer is yes, you start assimilating these goods and services which we now lump into performance obligations. From a system perspective, what you see though is you may have many to one relationship. So you have many sales orders into one RER contract. So, you know, highlighting the fact that at least many companies now are really looking towards the contract activity to really start assimilating your revenue position. So that, that will do two things, obviously. So from a RER perspective, you have this contract visibility but you know, from an accounting perspective, you know, besides being you know, in compliance with the new guidelines of looking at, at these deals from a contract to contract basis, what you have is you now can look at these on a performance obligation. So what Shashank was showing there is very important. So you know, he is actually allocating SSP for all those folks out there, standalone selling price, at the high, at, at the at, at the top level, revenue level, but what he's also doing, he is by de facto allocating cost to those performance obligations. You know, for most most uh, folks before this, you would have it would be very difficult for departments to actually bifurcate cost on a performance obligation level. So this actually tying up from performance obligation to allocated cost besides the SSP and the revenue side is to me, from an accounting perspective, a game changer. Because now you have that, especially guys who work in FP&A, you know, I, I know that before my, my time at Bramasol, you know, the conversations around adoption of 606 was all about, we need to start looking at revenue by performance obligation. And the question coming back to my team, my previous team from FP&A was, well, how am I supposed to allocate cost to each performance obligation? So there was a lot of education in that process. So I think, John, 
from my perspective, again, you know, just to summarize it, is that RER, the RER contract becomes the central object. Right. That's that, a great, no, that's a great point, um, Julio, in talking about that. You know, Shashank, go back to, you know, we, we showed, can you go back a second to, again, the whole list of the different contracts, the one that shows sure. all the, yeah. the profitability of, of contracts? And what I'd like to highlight here is another asset. So aspect, it's perfect. So what I want to highlight here is think about, you know, this, this. As we look at the individual contracts, we can begin to look at, so for example, profitability on an individual contract level. And you can pick, for example, contracts such as, you know, number 510 that we see here and number 511 and begin to understand the variability in those contracts at a RA contract level based on real revenue recognition uh, principles. And of course, because it's all done in SAP using the same what uh, the profitability elements are, I don't know if we can do that uh, real time here, but you can get a sense of you know, looking at some of those and what makes the difference between, you know, again, 510 and 511, 8,000 uh, versus the 2,000. What is driving driving that? So I think that's a key aspect. Another aspect that we talk about in this space is what specifically is driving or can you look at in total around uh, contract modifications? So if you think of the fact that this happens automatically as you begin to either update standard costs and your standard cost models, or as you begin to look at um, changing your bundles and looking at how how your standalone selling price and how the allocation affects profitability. You can begin to use this as a model going forward to learn more about uh, what you're doing. So, you know, those are a couple of key areas that we have uh, available to you. Uh, in addition, we'll be providing over time some really great dashboards and tools uh, that you can begin to look at and allocate together. Uh, with this. So thank you, Shashank. I appreciate a uh, great demo. Um, let's start to thank kind you, of, Brent. you can begin to see, and maybe, you know, um, Yasek, you can take a moment to talk a little bit about the architecture of this um, so that give people a little bit better perspective. Sure, John. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning, depending where you are. Um, so Julio and Shashank a little bit stole my thunder, but it's bit, but um, the point that Julio made is again the critical point. The, the RER contract is now the central object in this schema. Um, if you think about the whole concept of introducing the RER product, um, it did not necessitate for you to change the way you do uh, sales, the way your sales systems and billing systems work. It created the new object of the RER contract that represented the, the object of the deal with the customer which itself could be many orders or contracts in your operational system. Um, so this is becoming, in this scenario, the object around which you look at profitability. Um, and it gives you more insight into sales and product planning, especially once you start doing revenue allocation um, and cost allocation across. So what you see right now on the screen is the classical COPA, right? Between uh, account-based and cost-based and the way um, but everybody understands this one. This normally works in SAP. Um, sales order line items really drive the information. Uh, John, if you could go to the next slide. Now, with the introduction of RER, um, again, the RER contract and POB become a central object. You also have to be aware that there is not necessarily a one to one mapping between a sales order line item and a performance obligation, which is both. Um, well, a blessing because it allows you to really segregate your revenue and costing information to farther down, but also complicates the picture, right? The deal itself, again, the operational picture of the deal, sales orders and contracts aren't necessarily the uh, RER picture of the deal. Um, and finally, something that Julio mentioned also, when you start putting multiple documents from your operational document, operational system, excuse me, into RER, into one RER contract, again, you're now looking at probability across 
multiple sources that perhaps could be today in various market segments uh, and have never really been looked at together. Um, so again, this becomes a new dimension, how to look things together, a new insight into your sales and relationship with customers. Uh, John, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so to maybe wrap all of this up from a technical standpoint, right, um, what you saw is uh, additional venue characteristics into COPA from the RER side, which is downstream of operational SD documents. Um, and that giving you an ability to see um, your sales in this new dimension um, under, excuse me, under the, the rules of the new guidance. Um, again, the key in there is once you start combining operational documents and combining characteristics and allocating revenue, that's where the whole picture changes from what you used to in a COPA picture that's been really sourced from SD operational data. John, back to you. Thank you, Yashi. So before I wrap up, uh, what I want to talk a little bit about and, and give everybody a view of is what's upcoming. But to give you an idea of how what we're taking is a tool that was designed originally to be a compliance tool and turning it into it and helping drive optimization. In the past, we've talked about this concept of comply, optimize, transform. Here's an example of how you can take optimization and really take a tool like RAR and leverage the power of the insights provided by RAR into a tool that can be used for management purposes and drive profitability. Bramasol can help you with that, um, really drive that down to the POB level, the RA contract level, and really today, now, give you insights that previously were unavailable to you and begin to help you have uh, insight into that. In addition, we're also focused with folks on really understanding areas as we deal with COVID-19, um, our customers have been asking us about some key areas for guidance, areas around managing cash and cash position, freeing up cash flow and EBITDA. Um, what do I do on revenue accounting and reporting with respect to the implications of some of the cancellations of contracts? or requests for frequent contract modifications? Um, what is the story with goodwill and intangible impairments as we look at the impacts of the current economic challenges? Can I do lessee, lessor, lease modifications? Hedge accounting and how do I manage profitability at a detailed level? That's what we just saw. What we offer everybody is accounting advisory services. You heard from Julio. Um, reach out to us, we can take a look at how you're doing the accounting, does it make sense, is it in compliance, how can we help you tweak things such as treasury, revenue accounting, cost accounting, et cetera. We can provide functional and business process assessments to help you understand and optimize uh, the processes you have today, and do technical evaluations to help you optimize connections such as what today with COPA. Um, we have a lot of resources available. Here's a list of the demos that are coming up or the um, rather the um, webinars that are coming up. Again, I encourage you to go check out our eBooks and blogs on treasury and risk uh, and jumpstarting CFIN with treasury. Uh, and we do have a series of upcoming videos uh, that are coming out on optimizing cash flow uh, with active lease management. So with that, um, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the team. Uh, thanks for all of you for joining, and I hope you have a great day. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy, and we look forward to you joining our webinar next week focused on uh, mergers and acquisitions during these economic times. Thank you very much.